Hello to our patrons. Welcome to this artist talk with Matt Eich, whose exhibition, Small Beginnings, is on view behind me. Welcome, Matt. Thanks, Jennifer. It's always good to catch up. It's nice to see you. To those of you who follow us, Matt's name and work will be familiar. Small Beginnings is our third exhibition. It follows the 2016 Carry Me Ohio and the 2018 Sin and Salvation in Baptist Town exhibitions. Both these projects belong to the four chapter study, The Invisible Yoke. Matt's long form projects touch on themes of memory, family, community, and the American condition. All of these themes are represented in this show. Matt, how does this work touch on the same pulse yet exist with distinction? Well, I feel like all of the work I've been making is somehow connected. Whether or not I initially see that is, um, is usually the issue. I have to have some distance from things usually to be able to kind of uh, see the pictures clearly. And so this series that you're showing is um, it's kind of unique in and of itself in a lot of ways because it's drawn specifically from the seasonal blues self-publishing experiment that I've been doing for the last two years. So it's newer work, which means that it's still a little bit fresher, closer to the bone right now. So I'm still trying to figure out how the pictures interact with one another. But one of the steps in the process for me is to make these self-published zines, usually in a limited edition of 300 or so. And I can kind of pull pictures from different contexts and rearrange them into something that feels musical, um, where they're flowing from one image to the next. It kind of blurs the lines between commissions and personal work, family photographs, photographs of strangers. And this exhibition, uh, which the viewers can see a little bit of behind, is kind of a, I don't know, it's new ground for me in terms of mixing different media uh, that I'm printing on. So we've got traditional archival pigment prints, we've got some um, LexJet sticker prints, and then we've got some prints on silk that kind of flow and float with the breeze. And that felt like the right fit for these photographs because, again, I'm just trying to kind of break out of the the norms and out of what I would typically be doing. And uh, yeah, and the install is also a little bit kind of out of the norm for me as well. So a lot of yeah. new experimentation all, all within this body of work. I was trying to pull some sort of common symbols, making us feel like everything's a little bit more loaded. Well, this experimentation is going to lead to the next show that I've got this fall, which is a group exhibition at the Center for Photography at Woodstock. It's their annual jury, what they call Photography Now exhibition. And I will be sharing some new work from the series Say Hello to Everybody OK. And that'll be the first time I'm kind of showing that particular series, which draws a few images from this exhibition behind you. Um, along with some other work. And in this show, I will have some framed pieces, some sticker prints and some silk pieces as well. So uh, this show and this experimentation has certainly helped push me in certain directions or allowed me to see some of the possibilities for mixing different ways of representing photographs on the wall or in a space, if not on the wall directly. You've been following instinct and been trained in the disciplines of photojournalism and fine art. How do you think about photography, art, descriptors? Do you feel like it's time to just shake these things off? And how do you think your work has evolved and matured through time? Well, it's, it's interesting to think about um, shaking boxes or labels. And I, I think that one of the, the things that comes up in conversations with students a fair amount is the comfort that comes from applying a label to oneself when you're first starting. Mm. I am a artist, I am a photographer, I am a photojournalist. Kind of the more narrow you can describe yourself, the better, because then people know exactly what you do. But the longer you make pictures, the, the more that starts to feel like yeah, it's limiting and it closes off possibilities. And so it's funny, like 
starting out, I definitely wanted to be a photojournalist, and now that that's not at all what I would call what I make. I'm comfortable with photographer, with artist, with documentary photographer, maybe loosely, but but yeah, even that genre is still pretty limiting and also layered with problems. But I don't know. It's I think less useful to apply labels and boxes to one's work the further you go. And so I've been trying to shed a lot of the older ways of thinking as I progress and then also just trying to become more critical about my practice and how it functions in the world. Um, because I came from that world of photojournalism and then into freelance kind of editorial photography for many years to make ends meet. and that's usually pretty quick hit stuff that doesn't allow for much time or thought, uh, you know, and then it reaches the maximum audience possible and it's kind of discarded rather quickly. Um, so I, I don't know, my practice has definitely been evolving with those kind of limitations and shortfalls in mind and you know, just thinking about even the, the ivory tower of fine art and how limiting that can be when it comes to excluding a, a large majority of the population from the conversation because most Americans don't have access to institutions uh, where they can go and see shows or even if they did have that within driving distance they may not feel like they're welcome there so um, yeah I've been thinking more and more in recent years about how we make photographs and art accessible to a wider audience and not just make it for ourselves and preach to the choir but at the same time I'm also becoming um, more and more comfortable just making work out of my own desire to make because it's a question of sanity and um, and you know making it less about waiting for somebody to call me and ask me to leave. I look at your work and I feel some of your biggest fears and concerns especially as the father of two young girls coming to fruition. I also always have this feeling of infectious hope. How do you watch for and reflect this in small beginnings and your work in general? So my dad's kind of the eternal optimist and my mom's the realist. I've got some mix of the two of them, um, but it, it shows up in like hills and valleys for me. Like some days things seem like they're going to be okay and some days less so. And there's been a lot of valleys recently, especially like just paying attention to the world in any way is, is a debilitating exercise. Um, and so I, I do feel a sense of despair and hopelessness when I think about America and what we've done to one another and what we continue to do to one another. Um, just like the rampant hate that continues to um, spread through the country. And yeah, I just don't know how we come back from a lot of what we've done. Um, but at the same time, as a father, I can't accept that because like, we've got two little ones that are coming up and we got to try and do our best to leave this world a better place than we found it because when we found it, it was <laughs> not doing well and it hasn't been doing great recently. So, um, yeah, I think that's partially what motivates me to keep photographing. I feel this is the time we need art more than ever. I'm thinking back to the Robert Adams quote that you were sharing with me as I was thinking about the upcoming online you and your show that I'm putting together. We have over 20 artists in that show as a final cut. Um, and that's an initiative where I've invited our previously exhibited and represented artists to invite someone else to contribute work to a large group show. Um, so it's just as a pulse on time, but also just looking at the invisible ripple that we, that connect us that we don't realize is there. And I think too about ambitions you have for the work in public space. I'm trying to find ways to bring work into public spaces uh, in an affordable kind of low impact way. And so I received a small grant from the university where I teach to distribute some picture and poem installations to partners around the United States. We have not really gotten the ball rolling with that yet, but I'm hoping end of this year, beginning of next year, we'll be printing and shipping some kind of little 
sticker print exhibitions that can be thrown up in public spaces by people that are interested in collaborating with us. And they will receive a few hundred copies of a newsprint publication that's pictures and poems as well. So I'm hoping we can kind of put these up all over the country, but in places where uh, people would typically not be exposed to art, you know, trying to identify underserved communities in particular, where it might be valuable to just put art in people's path as they're moving through their day-to-day -day existence.